What's up, YouTube? This is Drake, and I'm here with a 38 and 4 Team Infinity Slayer on a drift. Uh, it's a pretty good gameplay. It's a lot of sniping and overshields and herp de derps and some pretty good gameplay. So I hope you guys enjoy that. And what I want to talk about today is, well, first, briefly, strategy. On a drift, what I like to do is always take the other team's sniper, go through your basement and take the sniper. Um, if you're playing kind of lame players like this, you can usually beat them to it. So there I am with a nice double. And I actually, this is a pretty good game. I got like eight double kills and I think three triples and an, I got like an overkill and an exterm and it was, it was crazy. Um, so hopefully that keeps you guys occupied for this somewhat long seven minute commentary in which I will be talking about Halo 4 and its success, successes, excuse me, and its failures. And I mean, it's generally acknowledged by the Halo community even as well as the larger gaming community that Halo 4 was a little bit of a failure. I mean, I still play it, and obviously 15 to 20,000 people still play it on the regular, but that's nowhere near um, past Halo's at their one year release mark. I know Halo 3 still had hundreds of thousands. Um, Halo Reach, one year after its release, was still pulling like 100 or 120,000 um, users. And, and I think that those lower numbers on Halo 4 today really illustrate the flaws that this game had at launch. For example, at launch, this game had no Team Snipers playlist. They had like SWAT, Big Team, Regular Infinity Slayer, a separate playlist for each objective, which is not a bad idea, in my opinion. Um, and like I said earlier, the 343, they really made Halo 4 unique. I don't know what they thought. They might have thought the Halo formula was getting stale, needed a fresh boost, maybe they just wanted to sell more games by codifying, um, kind of a funny word actually, codification, codify, to codify, to make something similar to Call of Duty. And um, I'm going to say in many ways that was bad, but 343, when, you come, when it comes down to it, 343 had new ideas for Halo. They wanted loadouts, they wanted um, tactical packages and support upgrades or whatever they are. They wanted loadouts, customizable loadouts, they wanted... Um, what did they want? They wanted sprint built in. They wanted um, flinch. And I'm sure that they tested that. They were probably questioning themselves during development, do we want to put flinch in this game? And they said, yes. Do we want to put D scope? They said, well, they probably tested a bunch and said, no, this game works better if you stay scoped in when you're taking damage. I mean, they took a lot of complaints of Reach. What were the complaints of Reach? Granukes, armor lock, um, sprint plus sword, bloom, and they, they didn't necessarily get rid of them, but they, they fixed those problems, either by getting rid of the faulty whatever game mechanic, or tweaking it. For example, Armor Lock became Hard Light Shield. Is Hard Light Shield overpowered? Not really. As you're going to see in this video, someone throws up Hard Light Shield, the solution to sprint directly at them. Literally, you can sprint through the shield and melee, and we're going to pause for a minute. Ooh, Hail Mary. That's a nice nade kill. Anyways, um... Armor Lock became Hard Light Shield, and no one complained about Hard Light Shield because Hard Light Shield was reasonable, it wasn't overpowered, it had its uses, but it really wasn't all that great. Another people thing people complain about, Sprint. I would say Sprint, okay, I mean, name a game today that doesn't have Sprint. And Halo 3 didn't have Sprint, Halo 2 didn't have Sprint, whatever, whatever. People say it breaks map flow. I think it's less so if everyone has it. And just take Sprint as a given. You're going to have Sprint in the game. How can you, how can you counter that? Well, you can make... Lower damage when you're taking damage. That was another complaint about Reach. No, lower speed while you're taking damage, excuse me. People complain, oh, anyone in Reach can just spawn with Sprint, grab the sword, and just they're unstoppable. They can just sprint at you. What did 343 do? They took that into account. They listened to our problems, and they fixed their next game so that when you're taking damage and you're sprinting, you are slowed down now. What else did they... What else will we complain about? Grenukes. They nerfed grenades. Grenades, I think, are pretty darn perfect in this game. Reach was obviously over the top. CE was over the top, because CE was ridiculous. Halo 3 had, like, uh, really just, like, puff grenades. Grenades were no good in Halo 3. So they decided for Halo 4, we're going to make grenades a bigger part. What I don't understand, or what I don't agree with, is that they added flinch. Now, flinch, when you think about it, that's just for you, if you don't know, that's when you're shot, you're, when you take damage, and you're, it's especially pronounced if you're zoomed in. If you're zoomed in and you take damage, your crosshair will move. I think in this game it's exclusively up, but um, proportional to the amount of damage you take. So if you're zoomed in, say, with a sniper and some guy pistols you, you're going to feel it a little bit. And if you're zoomed in with a sniper and, say, you get shot, shot in the body with another sniper, your aim's going to go way off. 
and flinch wasn't good for the game. It's not good for competitiveness, which is obviously why this game has zero competitive aspect. There is no MLG, there is no AGL, there's there's none of that. This game is not competitive at all. And one of those, well, I think one of the reasons is that there is no, there is flinch built into the game. There's no way to turn that off. It would have been fine if 343 launched this game with whatever and gave us options. Give us options. Give us an option for everything. I want to be able to toggle in custom games grenade indicators, per se. Say for MLG, they decide, oh, we don't want grenade indicators. They ought to be able to turn that off with the least possible, you know, hassle. Same thing with flinch, same thing with descope, same thing with infinity ordnance. There needs to be so many options that everybody can be happy. And then across the board in matchmaking for the non-MLG playlist, there needs to be one standard. I don't know what it is. I don't know if Sprint is good for Halo. I'm not the guy to decide that. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure, I sure as hell don't want flinch. Like loadouts, if they work well, if they're balanced, as I believe they are today for the most part, that's uh, that's fine. You know, they nerfed the bolt shot. They did the weapon tuning. That was great. That all needed to be done at launch. Um, and this video is coming to a close, but basically the thesis of this video is that Halo 5, if it's going to resurrect Halo, I think it needs to be the game we need it to be at launch. They need to do a beta test. Take Bungie's lead. Bungie's coming out with Destiny in um, spring of 2014. There needs to be a playable game at launch. We don't want to have to deal with this six-month wait for weapon tuning. We need to have all the playlists we want in the game from the start. Boom, 343, make it happen. And we need to have options. You need to be able to toggle everything. So there you are, 38 kills, 4 deaths. Peace out, I'm done with rent.